Hey there everybody, welcome back. It's that special time again when I get to record some more Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Oh, <clears throat> I do enjoy this game a lot, despite how frustrated I sometimes get at it. I'll, I'll play it for, you know, four or five hours straight, take a break for a couple of weeks because it takes that long to upload the episodes, and then dive straight back in again. Now, I've had a quick look over the combat controls because last time I did not do too well. And I've heard a few rumours about this game, right? Uh, I've heard that the block might not be directional. And, you know, I'm, I'm a bit old school. I, I've played games like, um, you know, Severance, Blade of Darkness, where you actually had to block physically, otherwise it didn't count. So it was all about lining things up, uh, aiming, stuff like that, right? And nowadays you get these games like Dark Souls, where you just press the dodge button and you're invulnerable until you finish dodging, which, even if something hits you, which to me just feels really weird. So, I've got a few theories, and before I dive right into the gameplay, which I'm about to do, okay, I want to say, a few episodes back, there was a really nice cutscene, and I just didn't want to speak or disrupt it, right? I didn't want to disturb it, I wanted to respect the quality of it, and then I would have, I, I spoke once during that cutscene, just once, and I should have spoke a lot more, there were a lot more thoughts going through my mind. So let's, let's dive back into the gameplay, shall we? So yes, blocks might not be directional. Uh, there's a rumour that if she's attacked from behind, she can swing the sword back round over her shoulders and block behind her. And I need to remember that there's a uh, parry and counter-attack mechanic as well. So I can, I can if, you know, time the blocks right and then attack straight afterwards. Um, also, trusting the voices in combat is good. I don't know... I think the Triskel on the mirror is some kind of clue towards... Hey, I was on the other side of that door! I hadn't opened it, I hadn't walked through. But it's... it's brought me through. So yes, I was standing here about to open this door and walk through onto that bridge. Okay, so got a few thoughts before I continue, right? There's a few different ways this could be handled because Senua is insane and we're viewing this through her through her mind, right? And I suspect that out of all these alternative um, hypotheses or, you know, different scenarios, the game developers will never make it totally, completely clear which is true because they're leaving me to draw my own conclusions and you as well, right? Uh, you know, firstly we could decide that she has gone completely insane this is all in her head. She's basically hacked off the head of her dead lover, or thinks she's hacked it off. You can see the head just down here, you know, there, on her belt. And she's wandering around in the marshes and the fjords of the Northlands, beating up trees and bushes and a few animals and getting really stressed out. Or just even attacking shadows, you know. That's one option, right? Second option would be the the idea that actually, you know, this is this is not a physical journey at all. This is into the depths of her madness, and she's trying to, you know, reclaim, you know, defeat her demons so she can reclaim her sanity and come back to her life with her beloved Dillian, right? And that would be a nice one. Right, saying it's it's all metaphorical, it's it's visions and dreams. Well, not nice in that regards, but nice in that you know she can There is hope for her, right? That she will overcome this madness and return to something positive again. Because this seems to be a fairly downward, self-destructive path so far. A third possibility is that it's all actually real, you know. The, the gods, men, and monsters that she faces are exactly as we see them. And that's quite a frightening prospect. Another interesting thing is, of course, when she uses focus, the Ogham appears all over the screen, and that's obviously Celtic writing as opposed to the Viking runes. Interestingly, the hall near the first great door had Anglo-Saxon runes instead of Viking runes, 
in a few places. So that's going to be confusing and a bit harder to read because there's 33 of them instead of 24. Which makes it very difficult because I'm not familiar with the last sort of eight or nine of them, especially as there's, you know, duplicates and redundants in there in the Anglo-Saxon runes. Now, something I have believed for a long time is that Senua is becoming Hell, right? The game is called Hellblade after all. Let me just get some light on this. So the rot in her arm is spreading. Of course, Hell, the goddess, is rotten all down one side. And so in this case, as the rot spreads through Senua, she is becoming uh, Hell's mouthpiece or property, you know, like a fraud or slave, or even becoming Hell herself. And maybe we're not playing Senua, right? Maybe, actually, this is Hell mourning for the departed Dillion. And the only way Hell can do that is to impersonate Senua and try to understand where she's coming from emotionally and, and get in touch with her feelings and stuff. So, I would not be surprised if, by the end of the game, Senua uh, either defeats Hell and takes her place as the ruler of Hell, <laughs> or Hellheim. I, I can see why the developers went with Hell uh, and Hellheim to... I mean, technically they can both be called Hell as well, which is what I'm used to, but it might confuse some people. And that rain just falls straight... Oh no, it is open-topped, it's not entirely... No, there's a, there's a roof up there. There's parts of a roof. So yeah, I'm imagining that Senua will either... You know, she's, she's sacrificing herself to the underworld, but... I mean, she's not going to get much out of this, because, you know, the main thing we know about Hell is that she's an uncaring goddess. She will not be merciful. You know, she, she just, you know, maybe a slight sneer of disdain, but that'd be about it. So, let's see where this takes us. Um, so, yeah, if there's any nice cutscenes, I'm going to shut up while they're playing. And I need to... Oh, okay, so she doesn't like the rain. I thought the sword was coming out for a moment there, and I was like, hey, we just had a fighty section back there. This looks like something bad could happen. And is that a walled up door up ahead? So, something else I wanted to mention actually is that, like, the Viking warriors. You know, like Einherjar, well they're not Einherjar are they, they're like Graugur or something. They actually look very Celtic with the masks, the way they dress and stuff like that. And that's obviously coming from Senua's culture. You know, she's seeing things the way she's used to... Oh, that's bad. The voices are being very quiet here. I don't like this. And... The gate. Oh yeah. It's opening. The gate is back again and... Disgrace. The gods will punish you for this. Pick up the sword. Pick it up. Fight the darkness. Fight it. Get up. Get up. Get up and fight. Oh, that's bad. Stormy seas and lost souls. She's dreamt of this before. They say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts and fears. 
as seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake, and we only see what our inner eye creates for us? Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares? Maybe that's why people feared seeing the world through our eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. You failed the gods. You're pathetic. Rotten. Cursed. What were you thinking? Did you really think you could win? How stupid can you be? Everyone hates her. She's a curse. Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself. Because there's no one left to do that for you. Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. Just like your soul. Come on. Why go on? When you give everything and face that which torments you. Only to find that it is worse than you could have imagined. Why go on? Is it really so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer that we do not dare pose the question? Sometimes the answer lies in a memory. A feeling. A song. Do I have control here now? I believe I do. I have control. So, Senua has lost her sword, she's cut herself, she's really upset, and she's hearing Dillian again. This is bad. It was interesting on the bridge that hell was bought because of the old Norse tradition of removing the hair and fingernails and toenails from dead bodies so that they could not be used to build Nagulfar, the ship of the dead. And it was interesting that then is inflicted on Hell as well. I would not have expected that. I imagine she would have hair. Also, Hell was all rotten and mouldy down the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side, so Senua kind of mirrors her in a strange way. And I should be looking for rune stones. Did she really fall off the bridge? She may have indeed fallen off the bridge, but... The light was over there, it's still over there, but I'm going to go this way and see what I can find. That was a, a pretty powerful emotional moment there. 
she fears the sacrifice she wishes to make. Just walking with her toes in the water for a little to gain that fresh and feel of life before... Oh, that's a loud booming roll. We better move back, staggering up the beach. Poor girl feels terrible. And the voices are really quiet. They're barely speaking at all. I imagine it's to allow me to approach the distant figure. Well, this, this took a, a really ominous turn. We've gone from fighting our way through, also the gate. Um, one of the first achievements in the game was for reaching the great gate the first time, and I'm like, wait, that means we're going to get to it a second time. She's going to keep going round and round in maddening circles. The gate will stand in her way time and time again, and... What's that last Dillion? No! He's gone! He's in pain! In agony! Uh oh! She can run, but it just looks so bad. And, oh no. Of course, the shields on the long ships. So is there a limit on this? I mean, pushing herself to the limit? Because the shield, the ships for the burial of the dead. And where do we go from here? Before she first met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but. Not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father, Zinbel, made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs, errands out in the Orkney Plains. That was her world. Like this one. Barren. And lonely. <laughs> hey, is that Hierot up there? Wait, are we in Rohan? Oh, let's try. Oh. What she can't do it. You can do it. You can do it. Must. Look out for rune stones. An important message. Oh, that mocking laugh is nasty. I did like the fact that the shadow is, in, you know, she represents the shadow when she's speaking to herself in the mirror. And that's a way of saying, you know, the shadow is really part of her. Was it all just the light reflecting on the puddles? Glimmering in the distance? Is that light over there, or just light catching the rock? Hey, she's straightening up a bit. She's starting to regain some strength. That's good, right? Even if she's desperately gasping for breath and leaning heavily with each step. I'll tell you what, she should take that sword belt off and use the scabbard as a walking stick. You know, even though it's empty. Because, you know, it's probably made of like two pieces of wood wrapped in hide with metal at either end. You know, it's a, it's a fairly solid piece of construction. Is there, is there something over here? Is there something over here, down this way? 
There is. It's a face. And that is not the mother's... Is it the mother's face? It could be. Senua, there will be times that you will feel alone and exhausted. Like a strange little fish swimming against the tides of the big ocean. But have the faith to let go and let the tide carry you away. Because the whole ocean is your home. And it does not ask you to swim against it. That's, you know, a, a nice note of loving support from her mother. Yeah, you know, maybe Dillian's alive, her mother's alive, her whole clan are alive, you know. Perhaps by going into this nightmare hellscape and facing the fears and hopes of the entire clan, she can actually save them from a Viking invasion. You know, it's like, there's ways this could be looked at. And remember, she sees the world differently. She's been told this, she's been brought up to believe that she has visions and sights. And the game developers have constantly told us that you know, this, is, this is bad stuff, this is her going mad, but maybe maybe she has to be a little bit mad to say, there, there, up ahead. I see the glimmer of hope. Are there no rune stones here at all? No runes? There's got to be some, right? It's just... Or maybe... Truly... I am missing... Wait... I can't see all the way up there. She's just too badly wounded to look up... All that way. I mean, I'm being fairly thorough and not missing anything so far. It's already disappeared. Nothing lives here, not even you. Oh. It's in your mind. You think you can see it, but it's in your mind. I mean, this is getting back, like, near the beginning of the game, almost. Oh, that looked painful. That looked so very painful. Oh, that's, that's bad. There he was. The lone figure of a boy. Sword play under the shade of a tree. She remembers the first time she saw him. Her young eyes, there, he moved as if dancing, and the world danced with him. The gloom lifted, and for the first time in years, she felt a ray of hope. That wasn't her. Is that tree supposed to be Yggdrasil? There are things... Up. Oh, there's a gate. Oh, great. Now, I won't know if I've missed any rooms because you always find them in the correct order. 
but I will know how many are in this area. Man, as again, let's see, we are on Mirror. The Northmen tell of a great hero. His name is Sigmund. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses him, so King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast, but when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. Mm. That almost sounds like something from uh, the more Germanic uh, later myths that aren't really ad as canonical. Yeah, I like the whole needle and ring cycle thing. I wonder if anyone's done anything with Gudrun recently. And I don't mean that recent feminist rip-off novel about a character called Gudrun is an assassin. No, I mean... Can I? Oh, she can't run. She cannot run. This is bad news. But I will press on towards the gate at the top of this path and see what I can find, even though she wishes to reach the tree. I suspect that we'll need to reach the tree to open this gate anyway. Oh, we will not be reaching this gate this way. Oh, the stairs. Ah. Oh. go to the tree first. Then to the tree I shall go. So we haven't yet seen the third spirit guide. Is it... Is it going to be Druf, the mother, and the shadow? No, because we've also got Dillion. I think Dillion is the second spirit guide, because the mother doesn't, she offers support more than advice. Will this path, hey, <laughs> will this path yield another rune? Yes, it shall. Death for Sigmund and his brothers seems certain, but the king's wife is Sigmund's sister. And she begs for mercy, and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well, that night, when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens. Okay, the wolf licks the honey off his face, I'd imagine. There 
towards a path that continues off to the left here. Okay, look. There is absolutely no way I'm going to force her to climb down a ladder with that kind of gut wound, that kind of pain in her, in her side because of the constant moving of the legs and hips. The, the weight of the rungs, you know, the, the weight of her body on her foot pushing down against the rungs will transfer kinetically up through the leg to the body. It's just, no, she can walk. It'll be less painful. Even though she has to stagger the long way back and those rocks are all up and down and up and down. Stay on the shale. Stay on the shingles little one. And I don't actually believe she is that little. I think she's like maybe five, 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 six, five, seven. And it's just the foes she encounters are all massive. Now, I've already done that one, I'm fairly certain. those wooden boards underfoot. Hmm, might have to end the episode soon. Maybe I can let this one run a little extra long. A little a little more water. Water of life. Water of hope. Washing away the world weary pain from her heels. I've seen that rock before. In a few different places around here. Now, is there one underneath this bridge somewhere? Probably not. And I can bet she doesn't get to go in there. There's an iron grill. I mean, she could almost wriggle out under it if she was slimmer. Yeah. She's not allowed to go down there. There's the bottom of that ladder. At least now she knows she is safely down here. What is that marking on the rock there? Okay, it it looked almost like something just here from a distance. These almost like look like kilns, the bottom of these pilings. And while we obviously want to go that way, is there anything over here. I, I know I'm just prolonging this poor girl's suffering, but surely there will be an end to it soon. She may stumble and fall, but she always seems to rise once again. She is a fighter. One who does not give up. She will not fight them on the beaches, but she will never surrender. The tree, the tree waits. How ominous the tree. Actually, that does look pretty ominous. Are those corpses hanging off the tree? I believe they are. Speaking of are. As the she-wolf licks the sweet honey from Sigmund's face, he bites the wolf's tongue. The she-wolf pulls away. But Sigmund holds on, the chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister, plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches a new plan, one that is cold of heart and pure of blood. What did I say about the wolf licking off the honey? I think I rec remember, uh, oh, who was that Irish chap who did the Children's of Odin by, uh, Padraig something. Uh, one of the chapter heading illustrations. 
very much resembled that. And I know I'm wanting to go around that way, but I'm also wanting to come through here. Perhaps the two will meet. I do like the the framework there for the ribs of the ship. Uh, you know, for the for the sides of the ship. They must have done some nice research to to get that looking right. You know, let, get that looking good. There is the tree. I mean, yeah, that's pretty ominous. I suspect there may be a fight over there. At the tree. Can I run a little? No, she cannot run. She's... As she approaches the tree, her life force is ebbing away. She cannot run. At all. She stumbles and she staggers. But weary from her exertions, she carries on. This is strength. This is determination. Or is it the strength of madness that drives her on? Now, I don't think she's going to regain strength if she backs away from the tree. Just remember, we have runes to find. Hey, that actually looks less painful. Pacing to the left. All right. So we know this connects, and we can start heading this way now. I believe I've seen some screenshots. Uh, one of that tree ablaze with her standing in front of it with drawn sword. She does not have a sword at the moment, she has a broken sword. There may be lots of revisiting locations without backtracking as the madness of her mind makes her come from places to place. Like the gate, for example. Yeah, the gate was back again. The gate represents some kind of blockage or barrier that she feels unable or unwilling to pass. She needs to prove to herself her worthiness to... I bet I can't go up there. Her worthiness to pass the threshold. Seaweed or kelp? I think it's seaweed, I'm not sure. Day after day, watching from afar, she mimicked him, perfecting her own secret dance. Wishing those fleeting moments of light would stretch out to last forever. Listen to that rumble of thunder. It feels so hearty and f vibrant, full of life. Oh, there's blurring again. Something is... What? Hang on. Yes, we only get to see one in focusing. It's close now. It's a tree. has been defeated. There are no more illusions. Where are you going? Where is she going? What does she find? Can't we even find this? Will she hang on the tree? Oh hell! Oh, you what? Do I have control now? If only she could do the same. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes are new. And dance with it. Just like he does. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. What's that? Foxglove, pansies. Forget me nots, bluebells. This is all really 
idyllic. I have a horrible feeling it's all going to come crashing down. Okay, so I was thinking, you know, is this all leading up to a boss fight on the beach? Now I'm thinking this may very well be leading to a boss fight. What are those primroses? Oh, I should have paid more attention to flowers. Wait, wait, wait. Do those flowers have no, no stalks at all? We're flying flowers here with, with, with no stalks, no leaves. <laughs> It is, it is levitating! I love it. Well, that, that just sh wait. These ones as well. Okay, that is weird. Are they supposed to be lots of butter? No. They're like... Oh, God. Um, not not daffodils, but what are they like? They're, they're the wrong colour. Anyway, this is all very vibrant and colourful. This is getting into the kind of more psychedelic, trippy side of images and... Can she run now? No, she still can't run. Mate, if there was a runestone here and I totally missed one, I, I would be well gutted. Wait, she can't even... Come on. Yeah, she can't even walk to the wall. She is on a very narrow path here. On the tree. It looks so happy and alive. It's probably from somewhere near her home. Oh, yep, now, now I'm not in control, or am I? No. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not, I don't leave home much. Oh, Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait. Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well, I I watched you, and... You learnt all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dilly. Here for the warrior tribes. Just come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That oh. moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you, make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part. Who you are. But her world changed the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things work. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide, don't tell her. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! Now we have control with that, I believe. It's a good time to end the episode and start a new one. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now.